Is Bitcoin the future for currency, for investors, for the world? As polarizing as Bitcoin always has been, I've never spoken explicitly about it. And so now after a slew of recent requests to get what my kind of opinion is about it, here we are. Let's talk about Bitcoin. Whenever there's some substantial world event, everyone talks about like, where were you during the time that this thing happened? I still remember exactly where I was when I heard about Bitcoin for the first time. I was riding with an old high school buddy in his old dilapidated car, and he was telling me all about this new kind of crypto currency. It's not real physical dollars. There's nothing you can even buy with it yet, but it's going to be the future. And I thought he was pretty much crazy. At that time, he really didn't understand the intended purpose. He kind of tried to describe it to me that you could have this kind of blockchain. You could have this ledger. You could do these new things with it that you can't do with traditional money and different currencies. But it still, it didn't make sense to me at the time. I want to say that was 2010 when I first heard about crypto, when I first heard about Bitcoin specifically. And so it was very, very early on. Over the next few years after that, the price of Bitcoin continued to go up and a few of those really early adopters were like you know geniuses retroactively because what started with a few bucks or what that one guy spent buying pizza ended up being fortunes then in 2014 and 2015 it seemed like the logic had actually won out and the price of bitcoin completely fell huge fall off tons of people lost a bunch of money and it seemed like well come on guys like this isn't a currency anybody can use we're just speculating on the value of it this is what was bound to happen right but then the price just jumped right back up again because there was more speculation and this whole crypto boom happened Happened around all these new kinds of coins and new ways that you could use crypto. NFTs came out. Every influencer, it seemed like, had their own either NFT or their own crypto coin coming out, and it was going to be the future, and everyone's going to make a lot of money. There was a whole nother renewed gold rush. And throughout that whole phase, it still didn't make sense to me. Why would you own this currency that you cannot use, that just recently had fallen to basically zero compared to where it was? So why would you jump back into something that's so volatile, that goes up and down, huge swings every single day? It just didn't make sense to me. In the meantime, we're investing investing in index funds. We're using a 401k. We're putting a down payment on a house. We're doing these very basic, foundational, traditional kind of financial things, very much in contrast to this new world of crypto and all these new ways that you can engage in that world. And in the midst of that boom, there were a bunch more fortunes made. And again, I kind of felt like I had maybe missed out. The first time I didn't really feel like that because I felt like justice was served whenever the price went down. But this time the price wasn't going down. And I thought, oh, well, Maybe I've missed the boat. And then another swing happened. And in the last few years, there was this whole slew of scandals and fines and schemes and issues all throughout the world of crypto. It was an absolute dumpster fire. FTX imploded. Influencers were found out to be basically scammers. NFTs were revealed to be basically worthless. There's no reason to have this thing unless people value it. And so once the general populace stops valuing it, it is worthless. And so again, I thought, okay, well, justice is served. Things are called out for what they are. This is a little bit too volatile. This doesn't have any intrinsic value. So we should just blow it off. And then here we are again at the end of 2024, knocking on the door of 2025, and we're at all time highs. And just to seal in that regret, if I had invested, if I had put $10,000 into Bitcoin at that first moment that I heard about it, we'll call it 2010. That would have been hard to do because I would have had to steal $10,000 from someone because I didn't have that money. I didn't even have $1,000 at that time. But in theory, if somehow you could have done that, what would that be equal to today? How might that have changed my life? At the time, a single Bitcoin was about a penny. So $0.01. Now a single Bitcoin is over $93,000. So if I'd have put $10,000 into it, that would mean that I would have had a million Bitcoins. And so a million Bitcoins times $94,000 per Bitcoin equals almost $94 billion with a B, not million, not enough to be you know, a normal rich person, enough to be somewhere around the top 20 richest person in the world alive today. Almost a 100 billionaire. And even if I had put $1 into Bitcoin at that point, it'd be worth $9.4 million, something like that. I'd be retired. I'd be shopping for a new 911 ST. $1 would have completely changed my life. I think that kind of math is stupid because none of us have a time machine. We can't go back and fix our regret. We can't go back with hindsight and fix anything. It's a cute movie plot, but it's completely pointless and it doesn't teach me anything about what I should do going forward. Also, putting this kind of money into Bitcoin, speculating that it's going to go up in value by some astronomical number like it has isn't the point of Bitcoin. It's a currency. It's not an investment. It's meant to be used for transactions like currency. And I have a problem with this misuse of Bitcoin, at least cerebrally. But I guess the question we've got to ask ourselves is, does it matter? Does it matter that this thing was built for one intended purpose and everyone is using it, well, almost everyone, for a completely different purpose than what was intended? I have a similar issue with this in another kind of field of life that I really enjoy besides money, and that's cars. People do this kind of thing all the time with super high-end limited production sports cars. 
they buy the one of 88 Porsche or the one of 13 Pagani or whatever the special edition is that floats their boat. It's super desirable to the world, but no one can get one. And so they finally get their hands on one. And what do they do? They park it in a garage. They throw a cover over it. They never drive it. The thing sits there with seven miles on the clock. This car that is specifically made to be enjoyed. It's not like a Prius or something that's meant to just get you around and not be enjoyed. It's a specific tool just for enjoyment and it's frivolous and it's fun and they do the opposite of that and they park it just because they know it's highly desirable. They know it's in demand and they know it will go up in value. I'm going to create a new term about that right now. I'm going to call that investamorphizing it. It's like whenever we take a, a pet or something else, we make it like a human anthropomize anthropomizing it. What's that called? Anthropomorphizing it. Anthropomorphize. Anthropomorphize. It's like we do that with something that's not meant to be an investment and yet we put the characteristics of an investment over top of it, treating it like an investment, acting like it is whether or not it's really built to do that thing. Two other problems that I have with Bitcoin. Number one, getting Bitcoin in a secure way, keeping it in a secure way, and then somehow either using it or turning it back into money again in a secure way. The security of various different crypto systems and the longevity of different companies who are involved in crypto don't necessarily have the best track record. I don't want a significant chunk of my net worth to be in jeopardy in that way and unknown of what's going to happen to it or who might have access to it. The next problem I have with Bitcoin is the nature of what it means to be a cryptocurrency. Whenever you have something like Bitcoin that exists digitally. It allows for a level of anonymity way far and above any kind of normal fiat currency. And what does that mean? Humans are going to be humans, right? We're going to take advantage of areas where we can find an advantage. And that means that this is a favorite kind of financial vehicle for criminals. If you're a criminal, what do you use to finance your scam? You're calling people up on the phone. You're tricking them into sending you money. You're going to get that into Bitcoin because then you know you can run away with it and no one can follow your tracks. Criminals from basic telephone scammers all the way up to drug and human traffickers love cryptocurrency for this reason. So the misuse of Bitcoin, the criminal intent, the lack of security, all of these things are problems, things I don't like. But what about the elephant in the room? The really big elephant, a $93,000 per Bitcoin elephant. What about the performance of this crypto? What about there only being a limited number of coins that will ever be produced, thereby creating some real scarcity? And what about the millions of dollars that real people have really gained by putting their money in Bitcoin? How can we overlook that? How can we overlook the results that are possible or were possible or who knows if it's still possible in the future? I think it's very difficult to do when we're talking about something like this that is an asset that is purely built on speculation. No country, no company, no person is needing Bitcoin to function as a currency. It's not useful. We've got monetary systems. We've got bartering. We have every way that we can transfer value now that, frankly, already works. So why would I completely turn everything on its head and start using a cryptocurrency that's got a price that's highly volatile? I don't think we need that. I think the whole allure to Bitcoin is speculating that people will continue to speculate on it in the future and that little snowball will continue to go until who knows where. Everyone who has a Bitcoin is a billionaire. Maybe you pick an exit number. You say at 100,000, I'm selling no matter what. I don't know what that looks like for you. But when it's speculation, it's just too volatile. There's nothing underneath it, propping it up, giving it any kind of inherent or intrinsic value. And similar arguments could be made for the stock market. I totally accept that. I warrant that. The value of these companies and owning stock in them only really exists because everyone believes it to exist. We believe that money has value. We believe that stocks have value. And so all of us together continue to operate within this system that we've built. Maybe Bitcoin is just part of that system now. I can't say. I can't predict that. Personally, I still feel like I don't trust it. The infrastructure around it, I trust even less. The people in the companies that we have to use to access crypto, the people creating the coins in the first place, basically anyone involved in the facilitation of crypto, I don't trust. At least in that way. Maybe I trust you otherwise as a human being, but just not in this one particular way wrapped around this one crypto coin or really for me, basically any crypto coin. Just making this video is tremendously awkward because I will be either very right or very wrong. Things may come totally crashing down with crypto and all of them could be proven baseless and worthless and people can lose entire fortunes and it could be crazy or the opposite could happen. And my kids could grow up and go, dad, why were you such an idiot? Why are you investing in these stocks that are essentially fossils? compared to Bitcoin. Look at all these people that we knew growing up who are now multi-bajillionaires because they invested in Bitcoin and you didn't. How could you not see the signs? Where are the signs? Besides a track record of growth, show me something that is inspiring enough confidence for me to put huge sections of our net worth in that. Don't get me wrong. I love the idea of a massive gain. I love the possibility of your investments going up by 150% per year every single year because 
that's ridiculous. That's amazing. It'd be like if you said I could go to the gym once a year on January 1st and I'd be ripped the whole year long. It's like, this is surreal. This is almost too good to be true. But if somehow it works, like, why not? Let's all do that. But for me, financially, to tie that back to what it looks like to invest in Bitcoin, it just kind of feels like, well, if it's that exercise proposition of you go exercise once on January 1st and you're ripped for the whole year, or maybe you die. If that's the like toss up, you know, if it's 50 50 ripped or die, it's not worth it to me. Like I will continue to grow my dad bod. And that's also the secret comment word for today. Dad bod. I don't know exactly how to calculate the risk that's involved in Bitcoin because there are so many unknowns around it and so many different kinds of risk. It's not just price volatility risk. It's all those risks that sketch me out around what it means to own crypto. If you could somehow calculate that and subtract that out of the growth and judge that against something that's a lot more established that we have reason to believe will continue to grow, I think that'd be a really interesting kind of discussion, but I'm not the person who can do that. For me, I've got to do what I always recommend, which is do what helps you sleep at night. If you would kick yourself for the rest of your life and regret not putting a hundred bucks into Bitcoin, you do you. It's your life and your money. But if owning something like that that's so volatile makes you check your phone six times a day to see what's happening with it because you put your life savings into it and now everything's crazy, maybe that's not actually a quality of life improvement for you. Even if it makes you a hundred grand or something amazing, if it takes away your quality of life, maybe it's not worth it. I fear this video not aging well. I fear the perspective not aging well, but not enough to rip all of our investments out of the stock market. So it is what it is. As always, watch out for comment bot scammer, crazy people, especially on this video, especially if anybody on social media claims they have some expert trader who's getting them amazing returns and all you have to do is send them Bitcoin. Crypto is a really easy way for scammers to make away with your money. Once they get it, they're gone. You're not getting it back. So don't trust the comments. Don't trust anybody who has an expert trader unless you maybe meet them in person. And even then, maybe don't trust them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.